Welcome back to Giant Monster Games. I'm Adrian, and today we are playing Super Budget Aristocrats. What do we think of this opening hand? Four lands, a Blood Artist, and a Doom Traveler. I think we can keep this. This is actually not a terrible opening hand. Obviously, a little bit more land than we'd probably want, but I think we're going to keep it. Our opponent is on the play. We are on the draw. And Steam Vents coming in untapped. Two damage. He's doing some work for us. And he puts Ancestral Vision into the Exile Zone. Is that Ancient Notes? Yeah, Ancestral Vision. Sorry. I was like, Ancient Visions! No, that's not the name of... And we turn on the land. Oh, well. Could be better. Could be worse. We will play our Doomed Traveler and get this game up and running as fast as humanly possible. Passing it to our opponent's turn. Next turn, we will get our Blood Artist into play. Yeah, I'm going to always yield to you. I know what's happening here. And we will hopefully draw into some more gasoline because we are going to be playing a lot of lands very quickly. And because uh, our opponent is playing... Oh, no! More land! Mm, I don't like that. Play our Blood Artist. Our opponent may... No, I thought he might counter it, actually. Generally, when you're playing these colors, you generally counter everything. Uh, or at least most things. No, but he is going to bolt our... Blood Artist. Well, there's not much we can do in the way of that. So, um, yep. Targeting our opponent. And we're going to always yield because we know what's going on there. And it looks like we'll just swing in for one and then ship it to our opponent's turn. He is... He did get rid of one of our Blood Artists, which is going to slow us down hey, a little bit. Maybe not that much, actually. We have another Blood Artist in hand. So we should be fine. Ancient Stirrings does its thing. <laughs> Ancient Stirrings. Uh, Ancient... Ancestral Visions. Uh, ancient and Ancestral are two words. I don't know why I always, always confuse. Always mix them up. I don't know. If you've watched any of my other videos, you definitely know that. I've more than once called uh, one thing the other and the other thing the other. Um, yeah, we'll go this way. Play our Blood Artist. See if our opponent wants to remand or metal eek it. He is cracking his Delta. Polluted Delta. Grabbing an island. And anything else? No, he's just doing it in response, it looks like. Oh, no, maybe not. I could be wrong. And... Counter target spell. Hmm. Okay, well. No Blood Artist for us today. Go for combat, swing, and pass it to our opponent's turn. Our opponent is doing a lot of our work for us. He is already down to 13, and we have literally swung in for twice. And I guess we've, our Blood Artist did one damage as well. So, going back to our turn, our opponent literally plays the land and passes it back to us. We are literally drawing all of the land right now. I could rally and bring back the Blood Artist, but I don't have a sack engine, so they'd be exiled at the end of the turn, which doesn't really help us at all. Uh, so, we're just going to go on the slow clock. We, our opponent has 13 turns to live, and then we will clearly win the game. This is how this game is going to play out, is 13 turns, <laughs> one damage each turn. That's my game plan. Uh, it's not the best game plan, and he is going to play target player, discards a card, and deal two damage to our creature. Uh, that's fine. Um, goodbye, Swamp. We don't need you. And all of our stuff is in the graveyard. We get a flyer creature, and our opponent is... Is it actually being cast now? It is being cast. Um, so, yeah, that's fine. Opponent's going to draw some cards. He's now up to five. No, six. Oh, because it's his turn. At the beginning of his turn as well, he draws six. So our opponent Lily has his hand filled right back up, uh, which is dangerous for us because he is playing what looks like four color control. I mean, usually you'd see gray. No, wait, no, not four color control. I'm like, where's white? I don't see white. Never mind. I retract my statement. And Zulaport Cutthroat. Um, what do we think? I think we're gonna play the planes. Throw Zulaport Cutthroat into play. And I'm assuming our opponent's going to counter it. I mean, we are playing against, like, a deck that will counter absolutely everything that we play. A.K.A. Grixis Control counters everything. Yep, Cryptic Command. Not surprising. Destroys our token as well. So at this point, we need what? We need to get a Sacrifice Engine. So if we do get our lovely lady down here, we can actually play her and then rally and, like, drop a ton of stuff. Because we have three of our damage dealers in the graveyard, we might actually be able to play sack, like, everything. If we keep drawing lands, though, it's not going to work. Okay, going to our, our next turn, we are literally on the wait plan. We have 
I mean, at this point, we have eight cards in our in our library that we could actually potentially draw. We could draw any of our aristocrats, or we can draw any of our blood throne vampire. Um, especially when our opponent. Oh, it's our turn. Especially when I have to say. Especially when our opponent is going to be tapping out everything. But that is not the way that works. So he plays an ancient ancestral visions into the exile zone. Just fine. And our turn. We draw a lingering souls, which is okay. Um, I will happily play the lingering play lingering souls. I think we're actually going to play it twice. Um, so he may counter it. If he does counter it, that's totally fine by us because we'll just literally play it again. We're actually going to hold on to our swamp and let our opponent kind of wonder what we have, and might as well play it again right away. Uh, give our opponent a little bit of a little bit of a, a clock. I mean. Flyers are always a pain in the butt to deal with, so, or he may actually counter right now, we'll see. Uh, Snapcaster Mage probably going for, he can't Cryptic, but he could, what is he going to grab? Uh, spells? No, it can't be Spell Snare. Hmm. What is he grabbing with his, oh, he's going to grab uh, Electrolyze, it looks like. Hmm. Okay. Electrolyze deals two damage divided as you choose. So he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna knock off two of them. It looks like he'll probably kill these two guys. Just fine. We get two more under the table, which is okay for us. And ship it to our opponent's turn. We are not doing anything, but we will be swinging in uh, very soon. We're gonna be dealing two damage. He's gonna be dealing two damage to us, but our clock is technically faster. But you mean playing a Grixis control deck? He probably has a ton of other burn stuff. I mean, there's lightning bolts. Probably more. Uh, Holigan's Command, and we discard a card, so good thing we kept that Swamp, I guess. Uh, no point in discarding our Rally the Ancestors, that would be very bad for us. And I'm assuming he's going to swing with this Snapcaster Mage. Um, no, he doesn't. He's going to leave it to block our Flying Guy, right? That's how that works? <laughs> it's not how that works, by the way. And if we have Sacrifice Engine, this would be so good right now. Um, begin Combat. Does our opponent do anything? Opponent is going to Lightning Bolt. Our Zulaport Cutthroat, yes. Get some damage on our opponent, gain a little bit of life back, go into combat, swing to our opponent's face, and then pass the turn to our opponent. Come on, this is the slowest clock game ever. Um, literally, all we just need, we don't need much to potentially, so he's going to bolt that guy. Um, one, two, three. Uh, if I rally the Ancestors right now, I would do four damage. If only. I'm not going to do it. Um, I guess we could have when he electrolyzed our two guys. We didn't have enough mana up, actually. If we had enough mana up, we could have actually uh, rallied the Ancestors to bring the our, uh, Blood Artists and Zulipur Cutthroats back and then have all that damage happen. Um, I wonder if I did. I wonder if I totally could have done that and I misplayed. I wonder if you guys are leaving me comments about that right now as well. I'm not sure. Uh, we need four mana up. That's the one downside of that spell. I'm positive we didn't because we actually played three. We used three lands. And I get to choose a card for him to get back. Um, what do I think? Lightning Bolt, I think, is the one you're going to get back. Because uh, I would rather not give you Spell Snare or any other uh, counter stuff. Or Coling and Command is also really bad for us. So, uh, yeah. And I'm assuming our opponent's just going to swing in with Snapcaster Mage. We obviously have no blocks. So we're just going to ship it to our turn. Fingers crossed we draw into not that. Um, hmm. So what we could do is if on our turn, if our opponent does swing in with... Uh, the, problem, the problem is if we, if we... Just thinking. On our opponent's turn, if we rally the Ancestors, our opponent could... And we block with both block all these guys. Our opponent could literally just assign all the damage to one guy, one person, uh, one creature, which doesn't really give us the win we need. We really need a sacrifice engine. That's that's actually the sole thing we need right now is a sacrifice engine. Uh, until that happens, we are in a very hard sitting position um, because our opponent is slowly going to whittle us down. By slowly, I mean very quickly whittle us down here. So yeah. And Tarsier again. Um, let's give him Ancient Stirrings because hopefully we will win the game before he manages to actually get it played. Um, Ancestral Visions, not Ancient Stirrings. Again, again with the, the, the misnaming of stuff. So, 
Okay, and our opponent is basically tapped out, which is good for us. So again, we could rally, but I don't... We could rally, but I'm not going to. I don't think it's actually worth it at this point. And what do we get? Come on, we need to not land. <laughs> Why am I trying all of the land? Uh, okay, well, that's a thing. I'm going to play it and ship it to our opponent's turn. We are literally just hanging out at this point. Yeah, just hanging out. Always yield. And yeah. Oh boy. Just always hanging out, <laughs> playing for stuff. Okay. Conflux, lightning bolts. Uh, yeah. Kind of want to give him a lightning bolt back. Um, that are an ancient stirrings. Again, we need to. Uh, yeah, let's give him the let's give him uh, ancestral visions back. Ancient stirrings, ancestral visions. They're literally two different cards. Two different cards entirely. Why am I confusing them so much? Uh, okay. Yep. Yep. Our opponent draws up a bunch of cards because we keep drawing lands. We've literally just drawn la drawn all the lands. We need not lands at this point. Okay, so our opponent's gonna swing in. Again, for six damage, we have we're on a two-turn clock, and our opponent has enough stuff to basically cryptic whatever we play, which is not good. Really, more land? You don't say. Um. Hmm. Hmm. What do I think? What do I think? What do I think? I. I think we're going to ancient stirring or um, rally the ancestors for two, which will bring all of our stuff out of the graveyard. And he's going to cryptic it, I think. If he cryptics it, we're going to scoop. Um, actually, I should have done this on his turn after when he went to attack. Then we could have actually blocked and hopefully lost a couple some some stuff. But I'm pretty sure if he has cryptic right now, he would have cryptic on his turn anyways, or bolting us okay yeah, this just doesn't this doesn't work and double bolt there you go and we'll go to sideboard that was really rough we definitely need to bring in all of these our tome mod script and our sun droplet are definitely gonna be really good in this um, vile blight duress is also really good in this because we can actually pull some of the stuff out um, suture priest might be okay but I don't actually really want it uh, the other option would be Disenchant, but I don't think that's actually... No, we don't want to play Disenchant. Um, we are running up against a black deck, so we're actually going to pull out two of our Doom Blades and put in two Tragic Slips in replace of them. Rip, you can go in there. And what do we need to pull out? We can pull out a single Rally. Actually, do I pull out Rally? No, I don't pull out Rally in this one. Uh, we do pull out the Zealous Persecutions. Uh, Tide Hollow Scholar can stay in. Uh, one of our uh, Aristocrats can come out. One of the Doom Travelers can come out. We have two more things we need to pull out right now. Uh, I don't want to pull out Blood Artists. Actually, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going to pull out a single Blood Artist because we're going to need to actually just kind of prolong the game a little bit rather than actually not. Actually, do I, st I don't really want Sun Droplet in this matchup. Um, or do I? Hold on. No, no, wait. We are playing against Grixis Control, which means he has bolts and he has a bunch of other stuff that is going to be dealing us damage, so having Sun Droplet will hopefully prolong us enough, because he's not aiming to win the game on aggro, so we actually will be slowly gaining life back faster than hopefully he can be doing it to us. And Lingering Souls can come out. Okay, that's what we're going to run back. Fingers crossed that this works out better. We are playing up a matchup that we should, in theory... Yes, we're going to play first. We should, in theory, have a reasonably good odd playing against. I'm not going to be playing against with this, I don't think. Um, actually, no, we can we can, we can can chance this, because we can always play Duress first turn, Bloodthrown Vampire second turn, and hopefully within three turns we'll draw a Plains. I'd rather not go down any farther, because I'd actually like to Duress, his, duress on first turn. That is a better plan for me, even though, again, risky... So the one downside about this deck is because we don't have two colored lands. It's super duper hard sometimes. Um, you just don't have the consistency of getting both black and white mana on as early as possible. And Spell Snare is going to have to go away. So he has a double lightning bolt and a handful of lands, which is fine for us. 
Um, he's probably gonna just like, we're gonna play Blood Throne Vampire and he's gonna bolt it. Is literally the way that game's gonna play. Which is fine. Which is fine for us. And what do we draw? We draw our planes. That's good. Um, so yeah, we'll get our Blood Throne Vampire. We could have held off on it and actually played Lingering Souls. Uh, what is he doing? What is he doing? Is he just doing in response, I'm assuming? Um, unless he drew another spell snare. He may have drawn a spell snare. No, no, no. Why is it coming in? Oh, he's going to bolt it on our turn. Yeah, yeah, that's what I remember. That's what we were thinking. Um, we probably should have just held on to... Actually, no. I would rather have pulled the bolt out of his hand and kind of make him have to, like, play around us rather than than us kind of having... Yeah, we're going we're gonna to make him play around us a little bit. And, hey, there we go, another swamp. And we're not going to play the Riskret yet. We're going to play Lingering Souls. Because we're going to get two bodies onto the battlefield, which he can't obviously kill with one bolt, where uh, the Aristocrat he could have technically killed with one bolt. So we're going to swing in through the air, doing some damage, and then next turn we're going to play the Aristocrat, getting her on the table, and then we can also play Lingering Souls as well next turn at the same time. Because we will have four mana. And going forth... Our turn, what do we draw? Draw a blood artist. That's always nice. So... Yeah, interesting. Okay, let's go to combat. Begin combat. Swing with everything. And what does our opponent think? What does our opponent think? He probably isn't going to, like, bolt or anything. No, he's going to take the damage. And then, what would we rather have countered? We'd rather have our aristocrat countered. So, does he have counters for it? Could be a Mana Leak. He may not be playing Mana Leak. Most Grixis decks nowadays don't play Mana Leak, because it's only good for the first, like, four turns of the game. After turn five, it starts getting a little bit dicey. Um, sacrifice Creature. Yep. Pro Red. Okay. You can just waste your Lightning Bolt. That's fine. Um, obviously, we're not going to get the Life Gain Trigger from the Blood Artist. But that is okay. And go to our opponent's turn. We're going to Lingering Souls next turn in some more um, some more tokens. So this is uh, looking a little bit better for us. Our turn. What do we draw? We draw land. Um, we're going to pretend we're just going to keep it in our hand just in case he makes us discard, which is completely possible. Uh, go to combat. Attack with these guys. You and you. Go to attacks. And opponent obviously has no... Oh, does he have a response? What do you have, sir? Or madame? I don't know. We're about to find out. Does he have anything? Do they have anything? Uh, looks like the answer is no. So he's going to take some damage. We are going to Lingering Souls. And then let it go to our opponent's turn. Yes. Um, if he destroys some stuff, we could actually always rally the Ancestors next turn and then do a bunch of the sacrificing stuff. So, is this cryptic? It is cryptic. So he's going to destroy, oh, turn the token to our hand and counter Lingering Souls. Uh, which is fine, because that just means that Lingering, oh, no, it still goes to Exile. Is it Exile? Mm, no, counters it. Oh, because we're playing for Flashback if it leaves play. I didn't realize that if it was on the stack, it still gets Exiled. Oh, interesting. Uh, it's a good thing to know. And, yeah, we'll go to our opponent's turn. What does he have? Uh, he's starting to get enough stuff that he can actually start doing some damage to us. Uh, which is a little bit scary. Okay, there goes... What'd he, what'd he kill it with? Oh, Terminate. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yep. That is okay. We are in an okay position. And what do we draw? Please no more land. We've literally been drawing all of the land every single game. Uh, so I don't really want to draw more land, is what I'm saying here. <laughs> okay. And waiting for our opponents, our upkeep. Um, we're both playing about the same speed. Usually I'm tr I try to play faster, but I'm like, generally need to think. Think slash talk to you guys is actually what I need to be doing. So it's always difficult for me to just non-stop talking. Well, it's not that difficult. I'm pretty good at just non-stop talking. Uh, waiting for our opponent. It is our upkeep. What does he slash she think? We draw more land. Neat. I love drawing land. Uh, that's a lie, to be honest. Uh, so, what do we think? If I... Again, Bloodthrown Vampire. None of these are going to get gonna get haste, so... 
There's no point, because we're not going to be able to do enough damage by with our sack outlets, so we're just going to ship it to our opponent's turn. Obviously no attacks, because he's a 0-1. Which is one of the things that makes Zulu Park Cutthroat a little bit better in some cases, is Zulu Park Cutthroat is a 1-1, so we could te technically swing in, but Blood Artist does damage based on our opponent's, uh, other, opponent's stuff dying as well. And Zulu Park Cutthroat. Yeah, I totally want to play that. Um... We also need, just for the record, we need another <laughs> planes in order to actually play Rally the Ancestors. So, uh, drawing swamps is not a good thing. So, counter spell. That is rough for us. And ship it to our opponent's turn. We're just going to play the waiting game at this point here. No, we're not attacking with anything. And then we are going to also just pass through our opponent's turn. He plays Relic Progenitus. Da okay, so he's going to play it. And we... is he gonna, he's gonna crack it, like, right away. Because we don't have... we need... Ugh. If only we had another white source, we could prevent that. Yep, yep, that happens. Oh, a single. Really? That's interesting. I'm surprised he didn't just immediately crack, fire it off. And Tide Hollow, Tide Hollow Scholar. Uh, huh. Okay, well, might as well play that guy. Uh, he has no hand cards in hand, so it's not actually going to be that big a benefit, but it is going to be getting some uh, a body onto the battlefield. And we are going to have to start getting rid of some of our actual creatures out of here pretty soon here. Uh, okay, well, ship it to our opponent's turn. We need a single planes in order for us to actually make the rally work for us. And our opponent obviously could just blow away our graveyard right now. What she may do. I'm surprised he actually didn't do already. Um, so he's going to blow up his own stuff. He's, uh, I guess he's also drawing a lot of lands. He just drew another land, so why not use Ghost Quarter to blow up your own land so you're not drawing as much stuff. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye, Graveyard. Rally of the Ancestors is... yeah. Oh, XL A card. Again, just A card. Oh, really? Um, yeah, the Vampire might as well go. Yeah, might as well. And go to combat on his turn. We're not doing anything, so go to our turn. He is being nice to us. Um, so, Doom Traveler. Doom Traveler works, technically. Uh, go to combat. Um, attack with you. Yep, do damage. Slow, slow roll in this one here. <laughs> this is mostly, I think, us, us getting a little bit lucky, because... Oh, what is he doing? Hmm. Okay, so they will trade, which is fine. It'll be, it'll be fine. It's fine. You know what? You know what? It's fine. So that's going to trade. We do all of our stuff because two things died. So we actually gain a bunch of, uh, a bunch of uh, life off that slash do two damage to our opponent anyways. So I feel like our opponent didn't really, oh, uh, didn't really gain <laughs> much from that other than losing a land and us losing a creature. We will play our Doomed Traveler and ship it to our opponent's turn, um, which is good. I mean, I would rather when he makes us Relic, we're going to get rid of Tide Hollow Scholar, which is better for us. We're literally not doing anything. And is he going to make our Relic? There he is, yep. Okay. There we go. Scholar is gone. And another Zulu Park Cutthroat. That's always fun. And does our opponent have any response to this? He is holding one card in hand. It could be a counter of some sort. Completely possible. Uh, apparently it is not. So that's coming into play. We are going to go to combat. Begin the combating. And then ship it to our opponent's turn. This is just the slowest possible game we could possibly come up with. He could have uh, Creeping Tar Pit, but then we would have done two damage to him, and yada yada yada. Which is completely possible. We're not going to be swinging with Zulaport Cutthroat, because he, again, he could just Creeping Tar Pit and Chump Block. And he does play... he plays Tassiger. That's interesting. And makes us destroy something. So, oh, uh, target player exiles his graveyard. Okay, so there we go. That's our graveyard. Oh, no. Target player exiles a card. We need to keep the, the sacrifice engine. <laughs> That's really what needs to happen. And, yeah. Okay. Uh, end step. We're not doing anything. If we draw a planes, we can get the cartel back. Or we could just play a cartel. That's always cool, too. I like that. 
Um, is he gonna? He's gonna mana leak it. So yeah, we can pay for that. Because mana leak is not very good late game. It basically just makes us tap out, which is perfectly fine. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, paid for mana leak. He doesn't have anything else. Now, what do we think? I could. I can do what one sacrifice another creature. So this is gonna be one, two, three, four. Do I do that now? I think so. Yeah, we're just gonna go for it now. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, always yield. And oh, I probably could. I could have swung in actually. I should have swung in with Zulipar Cutthroat and whatever else. Um, yeah. Oh well. And you can get pro red, I guess. And yeah. Okay. Again, same thing. Same thing. Destroying all of the creatures. And our opponent scoops it up. He knows he doesn't have a response. That's just good. We are going to game three. Woo! Man, so much thinking, so much thinking. Uh, the one nice thing, like, the one thing I do really like about, we're actually going to run this back the same way it is, I don't think we need to keep it. A the one thing that's really nice about uh, Aristocrats is there's lots of really fun interactions, but the downside is there's a ton of thinking as well, so you're, like, constantly like, hey, what do I do here, what do I do in this situation, and for me to, like, process all the information and play and talk at the same time is... It's sometimes quite difficult for me, <laughs> I will say. Um, but uh, I hope you guys aren't getting too bored for me just kind of like not talking at certain points. So, uh, Tormod's Crypt, Doomed Traveler, and the Aristocrat. I think we can keep this. This is actually not a bad opening hand at all, to be honest. And our opponent starts off with a Watery Grave, paying two life for it, and putting Ancestral Visions into the graveyard. Uh, go to our turn. And what do we draw? We draw a Tide Hollow Scholar, which is also really, really good, actually. And there we go. Doomed Traveler for you. And we're going to probably play the Tide Hollow Scholar right away. Oh, I should have put that as auto-yield. Um, and he plays the Creeping Tar Pit in the tapped position. We draw another Tide Hollow Scholar. Might as well play that guy right now. Uh, I'd rather just kind of start grabbing stuff out of his hand. I know we all have VC. Okay, good. Spell Snare. Uh, that's fine by me. Uh, go to combat. Attack with everything. Attack with all creatures. I will say, I mean, if I had a some cards that are pet peeves, Spell Snare falls into my, like, top five most hated cards. Largely because it's a counter spell on one that targets two drops, which is, like, the biggest, um, in modern specifically, is, like, the most cards are two drops. So it, yeah, it's just really annoying. Um, if it was like two to counter two, I don't know, maybe it would be okay. And oh no, anticipate. Uh, so it's yeah, it's just kind of annoying in that respect for me. I just find it really annoying because majority of decks run a lot of two drops. Is usually like the biggest spread, and it just counters basically everything. Everything that matters, or not everything that matters, but most things that matter, it just like immediately counters them. So kind of annoying. Um, well, we know whatever we play, we're gonna be able to play for free this turn. So we may as well play the Scholar. Yeah, we're going to play the Scholar. We're also going to play the Tormod's Crypt as well, just so we can't potentially counter it. Um, yes. And we have Tassiger and Electrolyze. Um, Electrolyze could potentially kill him, uh, or kill our, our guys. So we're going to get rid of that. Go to combat. Attack with everything. By that I mean Doom Traveler. And then we're going to play the Tormod's Crypt on our turn. Obviously we can, obviously we have to play it on our turn. I say that like we have an option to not play it on our turn. But we're going to play it, and then as soon as there is like three cards in his graveyard, we're probably just going to blow it away so we can't play his Tassiger. Um, because he is, what, a four and a black. So he could actually play it right now. He could potentially play Tassiger. Um But we also have Tragic Slip in our hand. So there you go. He gets rid of his graveyard for us. We will swing in with Doomed Traveler next turn and see if he wants to trade. By trade, I mean we'll kill him. 
We'll kill his Tassiger. Duress. Ooh. Um, let's go to combat. Attack with Doom Traveler. See if our opponent decides he... See if our opponent knows what's up. Um, yeah, okay, good. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, yeah, we're going to get that token. And then we are going to Tragic Slip Tassiger for a single black mana. Goodbye, Tassiger. And then we're going to play our Doom Traveler and ship it to our opponent's turn. Let's see what they got. Um, they are going to get a bunch of cards, for starters, because Ancestral Visions... Oh, ancient. Ancestral. Ancient. No, it is Ancestral. Man, reading is like my number one biggest problem in life. I'm not going to lie about that. Spelling's also pretty bad as well. It's like my second worst thing. No, no, no. Spelling's my first worst thing. Reading's my second worst thing. Um, at least I can talk. <laughs> That's an upside. Uh, and what is our opponent doing? He is playing more lands, getting all of the lands down. Um, again, we do. he does have a Creeping Tar Pits in play. Okay, now we can't play it anymore. And Engineered Explosives. Two colors. That would kill a lot of our stuff right now. Uh, potentially everything, to be honest. Because it's destroy each thing. Okay, there it goes. So that's going to wipe our board. Um, or is it... Hold on. Engineer Explosive is sacrifice and destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost equal to... Okay, so that only gets rid of Tide Hollow Sculler, uh, which is fine. Yes. So our opponent gets that card back. So we know our opponent has Electrolyze in his hand. He can't play it right now, but he can put an Ancestral Visions into the Exile Zone. And it is going to be our turn. What do we think? What do we think indeed? Uh, I think Zulaport Cutthroat is pretty fun. Um, I also think Duress is pretty fun, but I think Zulaport... Hold on. Duress might actually be the better... No. Zulaport Cutthroat is a better bet. Um, actually, we're not going to play that yet. We're just going to go to combat first. And then we're going to play Zulaport Cutthroat. Duress is obviously going to be really good because we can um, potentially get rid of something in his hand that he's going to give us, you know... A pain on the butt with, give us, uh, give us, yes, give us stuff with. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm saying here. You understand what I'm saying. Give us a problem. It'll be a prob. It'll be problematic for us. That's what I'm trying to say here. Uh, but we'll get the Zulaport Cutthroat into play, and then ship it to our opponent's turn. They will play their Ancient Stirrings or put a take off a counter off it. Really, not actually play it. Um, I should put that on auto yield because I don't really care to have that going off every single turn. Electrolyze, yes, yes, yes. So this is going to trigger twice. Just fine. Yeah, always yield. Our opponent is going to take two damage. We're going to gain two life. Uh, slowly whittling our opponent down is what we're doing at this point. And he is cracking his Flooded Strand. And coming into play tapped. I'm tempted at this point to blow away his graveyard, but I don't think he has another Tassiger in his hand. He probably only has like one, maybe two in deck. Because, I mean, actually probably two. I could see him playing two. And it is our turn now. Uh, we draw another land, finally. Uh, we cannot, unfortunately, we can't play both of these. So let's just go to combat. Attack with our Doomed Traveler. And then we'll probably just get the Cartel into play. Uh, just because it's going to start being a 2-2, that'll also slowly, very slowly, start swinging in to do some damage. And you turn into a black, black-blue creature, don't you? Yeah, blue-black elemental creature. So in theory, I could sacrifice stuff off to the aristocrat if I need to. Because Catherine is... Catherine? Catherine? What was I calling her before? I can't remember. I think it's Catherine. Uh, what is our opponent doing at this point? We're at 8 minutes, but we're on the last game, and we are kind of slowly winning, slowly getting to the end of the game here, so we will see what happens. Um, waiting for our opponent. What does our opponent think? That is the question. That is the million dollar question. Um, yeah. Budget aristocrats, super budget aristocrats versus um, 
relatively top eight. I think it's actually not relatively. I mean, I think this is like literally top tier Grixis control. Um, we do well against Grixis control because uh, we don't do well against most control decks because we generally play stuff faster than they uh, can counter stuff. So they they run out of basically control power faster than we run out of creatures. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, I'm pretty sure Steam Vents is as much as our entire deck is, by the way. Just throwing that out there for those that are wondering. <laughs> I know this version of Engineer Explosives is worth like three times as much as our entire deck. Um, at least. So, waiting on our opponent, he is thinking... I'm going to say she. I think it's a she. Net Micro. But she, like, Angel in the, in the image, you know, just, just assuming. Um, I say that, but mind you, I mean, I'm pretty sure that... 98% of the viewers of Giant Monster Games are actually all guys, so uh, highly unlikely, unfortunately. Um, which is understandable. I mean, maybe it's not understandable. I say it's understandable. I think it's just normal is what it is, not necessarily understandable. Because even um, my fiancé, I've tried explaining her how to play Magic and been like, here, let's let's play Magic together. And she's like, no, I'm not really interested. Um, okay, go to combat, swing in with this guy going. Obviously our opponent's not blocking with anything, and we will play the Aristocrat. He may mana leak it or something else. No, he's not. Okay, well, that's the thing. Going to our opponent's turn, Ancient Stirrings is being cast. Is it being cast? I think it's being cast. And plays another land. Opponent is getting a lot of land drops. And what are we doing? He is paying costs for something. Uh, Jace. That really slows our deck down, to be quite honest. Um, maybe Duress would have been a better option, actually, last turn. Oh, well. Good to know. Um, yep, yeah, so he's going to... Oh, he's going to minus it. Reveal the top three cards of your library. That means we have to... And I get to put into two piles. Um, okay, well... Cryptic goes into one pile, and the other two go in the other pile. Basically, he either is going to take uh, the draw, or he's going to take the counter. This counter also technically gives him draw, so he may actually just take Cryptic. Which is what I would assume. Uh, which did he take? Did it say? I don't remember. Um, yeah, so he took the Thought Scour and the Ancestral Vision. Uh, ancestral Vision. And he's going to play Thought Scour on himself, obviously. Because he wouldn't <laughs> threw three lands into the graveyard. Uh, poor dude, that sucks. Okay, our turn. End step. Do we need to destroy anything out of here at this point? No. Um, if he plays a snapcaster or something in response, then we will actually do stuff. And let's go to combat. Uh, you are going to attack Jace. You're going to attack our opponent. Yep. There you go. I wouldn't mind getting rid of Jace. No blocks, it looks like. No blocks. And let's duress our opponent. Hopefully getting rid of something that is value in his hand. And getting a peek what's in here. So he does have Snapcaster. Sna okay, so it's Snapcaster, Snapcaster, uh, Steam Vents. So he's actually holding off because he knows he's going to play Snapcaster and we're just going to get rid of whatever he plays. Well, it's good to get a look at his hand. Um, and we might as well play another Aristocrats. Just get it on to play. Here you go. And ship the turn to our opponent. Uh, he is going to draw some cards. Oh, no. Counter's going down. No, maybe drawn cards. No, no. Counter's going down. Okay. Snapcaster coming into play. Uh, yeah, we're just going to exile his, his graveyard in response. So he's just going to basically play a body rather than anything else. Because uh, I'd rather him not play. There's a ton of stuff he could have played out of there, so... Yeah, let's not let's not deal with that. And we are also out of cards. We draw a planes, but let's pretend it's something else. Uh, at this point, what do I think? I could swing in. If I swing in with everything, <coughs> yeah, um, let's swing in with everything. Actually, no, let's not swing in with everything. Oops. Oh, oh. That was wrong. <laughs> uh, Why did I do that? Um. Yeah, okay. You're going to get pro blue. And it okay. Go to combat. I totally didn't mean to do that. Um I meant to I thought we were on attack phase. 
Um, if I swing in with both of them, um, I could also sacrifice the this guy. Uh, what do I think? What do I think? I think we're going to go slow and steady, even though I think it's a bad idea. Um, yeah. So opponent's going to take two damage and ship it to our opponent's turn. We are seriously in need of... Okay, there he is. He's drawing a bunch of cards now, finally. Oh, or is he playing it? I think he's playing it. Uh, no, he's drawing. He is drawing. Uh, he has filled his hand up, so he has a lot of options at this point, potentially. Uh, which is dangerous for us. We need... Uh, we have a bunch of stuff we really need. And does he, he doesn't swing in with Snapcaster. Which is understandable. He can also play a second Snapcaster. Ah, oh, why more land? Um, hmm. I sometimes wonder if this deck has too much land, but... The deck, the deck technically has too much land because we should be playing, like, double-colored lands. And, yeah. Uh, what do I think? What do I think? Um, I think we're actually just going to just attack with the Spirit. Uh, do I want to do that? If I attack with the Spirit... Okay, what is he doing? He's probably going to play the second Snapcaster. He's going to play Corrupted Command. Tap all creatures your opponent control. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. And he draws a card. And so that means we're just going to skip our turn. No point in playing any of his lands at this point, at this point, because uh, if he makes us discard, we can do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are. We're so close. We are so close. Our opponent is at six at this point. Like we shouldn't have that much time. Hard time. Shouldn't have that hard of time. Uh, do I... <sighs> yeah? I guess so. I think our opponent wants this to happen. And... So, sacrifice another creature. Yeah, you. Uh, what do I do? Red or black? Uh, I think red is where we're going to go because he might have bolt. Yeah. So, make his terminate bounce. Um... He could actually technically do the other one. Snapcaster Mage targeting Terminate, doing the other one. Uh, which he could have done either way, so totally understandable. Uh, obviously, we're not going to sack anything with this other one, because why would we? Uh, but we could, in theory, give this pro... Blue? No, no point. Pro, pro black. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll go this way. No point in letting him get the, the joy out of it, so we'll go pro, pro black as well. Terminate enters the exile zone. He's going to swing in for four damage, I'm assuming. Oh, no, no. No, he's not. And it is our turn. We are in desperate need of a Rally of the Ancestors. Blood Artists technically helps. Technically. Um, he may counter it. Yeah, mana leak it. <sighs> we have land in our hand as well. We could have played a land first. Um, no, we can't play it. That is super annoying. Well, let's let our opponent know that we could have played it. <laughs> uh, bad, Adrian. Bad. Oh, well. We learn. We learn. We should have just played it. We had two in our hand. Um, having one card is probably better than having two cards. Yeah. Oh, well. Yep. And he's going to be drawing a bunch more cards. This may be the point where the game swings to our opponent. And lightning bolting our aristocrat. If we draw a rally of the ancestors, we are golden. If we don't, we are in a pickle. We are in a pickle, physically inside of it. And what do we think? What do we draw? Vampire. Uh, I will play that. Get it onto the table. And he's going to Spell Snare it, my least favorite card in the world. And we're just going to play the other land right now just to get it on the table. Because literally as soon as we draw, if we draw a Rally Ancestors, we're going to play it immediately. So there's not really any concern about that. Um, yeah, I, I think our opponent, I'm surprised our opponent isn't doing the Creeping Tar Pit plan as well right now. Uh, it would be a little bit faster for him on the damage plan. But he maybe just wanted to hold up the, the mana so he can potentially Cryptic or other stuff. <sighs> Stupid land! Um, what is he doing? Target player discards a card. It's fine by me. Okay, here you go. Yep. 
Go to our opponent's turn. We are just... We're rushing. We're rushing to try and get something. As fast as we can go. We're playing as fast as we can. On the 4 damage of turn plan. Again, Creeping Tar Pits. He could be swinging in for an extra 3 damage each turn. This would become a substantially shorter clock. Sun Droplet? Uh, Snapcaster Mage doing the command. Making me discard. Yep. 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 And I think that's going to be game. It was so close. It was so close. We... We just need to rally the ancestors. That's all what we all we need. It's the only thing we need. Okay, so there we go. And again, as, as I was saying before, though, um, if you are building this deck and you have any money for upgrades, the mana base is the absolute first thing you need to be upgrading because you need to get the double-colored lands so you're not running into this exact situation where you're drawing a bunch of extra lands you don't need. Like, this deck realistically can run 20 lands, maybe even 19 lands. Eh, 20 lands is more realistic. Uh, but we're running 22 in this deck simply because we need to be able to get both of our land types. Um, there's nothing worse than getting to, like, turn 4 or turn 5 and not actually having the lands you need to play. So that's the first thing you would upgrade. And then you have two extra slots. You can put in other stuff. There's tons of other upgrades you can be putting in this deck, um, as you saw me in this giant list I made. Um, there's tons of things you could be putting in in place of those two lands you would take out by putting in uh, some upgrades to your mana base. So keep that in mind, and he is going to, what, lightning bolt our face and then swing in with his snapcasters. This has been <laughs> super budget. Uh, Aristocrats versus Grixis Control. As you saw, we did pretty good against it. We we just needed a couple cards specifically. We just didn't draw what we needed to. That was the big one. But if we did draw, it would have been a different story. Um, so yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this match. <laughs> My name is Adrian. You're watching Giant Monster Games. I hope you enjoyed this video. And until next time, don't forget to game like a giant monster.